Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. And this week on the uh, Magic Roundabout, we've got a Dinky Toys Triumph 1300. And as you watch this go round and have a look at it, I'd just like to welcome any new friends of the channel. Welcome board, thanks very much. And welcome back all the old friends of the channel. Thanks for sticking with me. Much appreciated. And as always, I read all your comments and I try and get them all done before the next video. So, we'll get this off the magic, get it on the bench and have a damn good look at it and see what, what there is to do. Okay, we're on the bench with the old Triumph 1300. Nice little car this, nice little casting. Like we say, we've got a jeweled headlight missing. There, and I've got some jewels, we'll have a look. Uh, it's got the opening boot. There, no opening doors, but it's got an opening bonnet, that way. With a bit of an engine in there, the old uh, Triumph engine in there. Yeah, it's a pretty good one, this one. It's got suspension at the back. And it's steerable by the old left and right on your hands on there. A bit clunky, but we're all right. Got one rivet. I've just flattened it down a bit because it was a dome with no hole in it. Number 162, as you can see. Base is in pretty good condition. Tires aren't too bad um, on here. I think they feel soft enough. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'll wait till I get the base off. Yeah. I think, I'm not sure if these would be 12s on here or not. They might be 12s, I'm not sure. They're probably 13s in reality because obviously the Imperial and Metric changeover. Windscreen, I'm not sure what that is on there. I'm hoping it's not glue. It looks, if you look at the bottom near the window wipers here, it looks like it might be glue. It hasn't been overpainted. That's for sure, because it's, it's it's in that um, like baby blue. I'll be using Ford Olympic blue on this, going to keep it the same colour, because there's there was a lot of these made in this colour. So I might as well keep it this colour. Yeah, so let's set about getting it apart, see what it's like inside. It's got an interior. So, see if we can do this. I'll get my old uh, spring punch on it. And give it a bit of a, a wallop. A couple of wallops. Not quite in the middle, but that will, will make a start on it. Oops, I'll never make a good archer, would I? If you're a little bit off centre, you can bring your drill at a bit of an angle like that, and as long as you're in the hole, you can scoot it across a little bit. I'm just making it a little bit bigger so I can get a bigger drill in. I think I need to change that and all. This is a bit blunt, this one. I find if you look at drill bits, these 2.5s, I've got these are Stanley ones, and I've tried quite a few. And uh, these Stanley ones seem to stand up a bit, they're quite nice. Um, these, yeah, unique tip design for a so it says on there, yeah, so not too bad, not too bad, my friend, not too bad. Right, let's just have a little dig in here and see what we got. That that post, I've got the camera at a funny angle now. What's going on? Um, that post, as you'll see on some posts, they seem to like pancake out quite wide. It's obviously where they pressed it down, they spin it. So be careful. I'm choosing the right size top. This is not bad size. This is a quite a, a bit bigger, this. And this is where you're a risk of damaging your base if you're not careful. So, just a little bit of care on this bit. Go nice and steady. And hopefully, 
We'll chew a little bit of this up and just enough to get it released. And sometimes you have to move it around a little bit because it, the next side that will be too big. And like I said, some of these are pancaked out a little bit. So you have to move it around a tad. We're just going to have a, a look-see. If we can give it a prod. Careful of the hinge in there. We try it from the here. That's not a very good plan, trying it from there. Move the wheel out of the way. We'll be able to get in there. It's quite a stub. That was a bit more. She has to be careful with this because there's the hinge pin for the bonnet is just in there. Yeah, sometimes it can be a bit of a pain. If you look closely, you'll see that's quite pancaked out all the way around there. If you've got a really big grid in there, you'll always damage the plate. So you just wiggle it around a little bit. It will come. Just be patient. Sometimes if you, have a, if you have a too big a drill bit, you, you the risk of spreading it even further. So I'll kick the wheels back a little bit out of the way. Let's see if we can just get in there now. There you go. It's come off now. So the drill, it's not a blunt drill bit. It's just, it needs a bit of working. All right, so we lift her off. Pull her out. Fairly substandard. That's the suspension. All right, I've got a bit on the front. They've got the back suspension there quite nicely. They've got a boot wall there. That's going to make it awkward to get these. It's going to make that a bit awkward getting these wheels out of here. Ah, God, I've got cramp in my little finger. I'm going to have to. Let's have a look, see. See, I've not opened one of these before, so I'm just going to have a look, see. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to take this off to get that wheel out of there. See how much. See how, next thing is see how much room we've got to play with. We ain't got a lot. Yeah, enough to get that off, I think. Yeah. As you can see, just got enough there. Just enough to get it off. Be careful with that. Front one, not so bad. Still got to get it off. Or the alternative is to leave them on. And caustic soda in as is. Uh, and polish the wheels up afterwards. But sometimes you put these type of wheels in caustic soda. They tend to go a bit black. Or, yeah, because I've got to clean it. It's, it. Or I could just leave it. Clean it. Put it in ultrasonic cleaner. Because I think the paint on the bottom is not too bad. Just a little few chips around the front there. We could touch up. I'll, I'll make a decision on that and see what we're going to do. I might chuck it in ultrasonic. Because there's not a great deal of room to pull these, grind these wheels off here. And if I put it in ultrasonic, I can then clean it up and perhaps just do a touch up round here. Because as you see, it's not rusted on the outside. A little bit on the inside, but we can still polish the wheels up. Get them shining up. Yeah, so something to have a look at, isn't it? Let's have a look. Let's get one of me. See what it, how clean this comes up. Not that you're going to see the inside, but I'm not taking any shortcuts, if you know what I mean. Just making life a bit easier for myself. But I'll decide. I might end up taking it off yet. I don't know. But that's suspension. Right. There again, narrow post at the front there. So I think we might end up using either a matchbox rivet, which is these here, the small ones. Get them out. Come on, there you come, there you go. These tiny matchbox Hot Wheels type rivets. And we'll just see if it holds in there. These are all the sort of things you need to work out before you start painting and messing about. Yeah, so that, that was sitting there nice. 
The reason why I'll probably be using that is because of this rivet. One, you don't want to go down too far in there and ruin that. And two, it's not that wide across there. I could tap and screw it if I wanted to. The screw's about the same length, the M5, M, yeah, whatever I'm using. Uh, M2, sorry. Yeah. So, anyway. Boot just flops out. Hinges on there, if you can see. Hinges on there. So that just comes out. Uh, same with the same with the bonnet. Oh, well, that is. So that's been glued on, doesn't it? See that? It's like glue from the factory, that is. It's strange, isn't it? It perhaps wasn't very secure when they did it. That's definitely from factory. Because you can see it's sandwiched in between, look, all the way around. And I don't think this has been off, that's for sure. Because that rivet there is exactly the same colour as that. I imagine that's what's happened there. Well, we won't be messing with that anyway. We're going to, just going to paint it as is. As is, as is. Interior. It's of a dark red. And it's, the, it's the thicker vat form, which I like. Not the see-through vat, vat form that you see on some corgis. And there is a bit thin in, in there, but it's nowhere near as thin as some of them ones they have in some of the corgis. Steering wheel. So that's interior is in good condition. That's cool. And luckily for me, the windscreen is not um, riveted in. But it's quite thick. And we'll have to look. We'll stick this in the ultrasonic, along with the chassis, I think. I'm just going to... When I ultrasonic this, I'll decide what we're going to do. Yeah, because I think that might just be get away with that. It's definitely dirt and dust on the outside of there. But we'll see. We can work it out. We can work it in. Oh, where's the other rivet? I'll get another rivet. I don't need another rivet. You're rambling, boy. You're rambling. All right. So, that's ready for the caustic. That's just give it a quick clean. That's all right. This is ready for the caustic. Oh, hang on a minute. I better get that headlight out, don't I? Now, there's no access to the back. So we'll try and ping it out from the front. Uh, what can we use? Use a knife. Sometimes it works. Try and ping this out from there. Sometimes they just come straight out. Sometimes they don't. There you go. Ah, ah yeah, this ain't, yeah. This has been replaced before. This is one of them stick-on flat back ones. Look here. Somebody's obviously tried to replace them. So this is one of the flat flat ones that you get from the shops. Well, we'll get rid of that because I don't want that in there. Yeah. Because that one's dished in. You can see it's dished in there. And this one isn't, so it's that needs all digging out. There you go, that's out now. Yeah, that's just glue. Right, I'm sure in my bag of in my bag of swag here somewhere in there. It's not a bigger bag of swag as some I've seen, but. It's good enough. There'll be a couple of jewels in there somewhere. If not, I've got a few in here. Off the wise flip flop. If nobody's seen this one, I've got to show you this. It's, my missus was most naffed off of me when I nicked this. Yeah. It's a bit mucky, but yeah. You can see the little jewels in there. I nicked it off her. She said, Where's my flip flops gone? I said, Oh, they've gone to a good cause. Yeah, look, there they are in there. These are ideal. Little, a bit too small for this job, but ideal for like backlights and stuff like that. Right. Okay. So here we are. Stripping time.
Vamper van. Done. Caustic soda. I'm not caustic soda. Get this right. Um. Yeah. Put it in there. Not the caustic soda. Oh, I, I can't think of the flip when I just said it a minute ago. I can't even think of it now. Ultrasonic. That's it. Come on. Ultrasonic. I must be losing it. Yeah. So put your tools away after each procedure. Get a bench of sweep down. There you go. That's it. That way you keep your place, your workplace tidy. Right. We'll see you. At the caustic soda. Okay then, caustic soda time. Chuck some water in. Got the fan on. There you go. A bit of sprinkling. Open. That'll work. I'm sure some blue paint come off there. I'll be human. Worst stuff is out of luck. See what's going on. Always like to have a quick look virtually straight away just to see how yeah, that's gonna that's gonna come off the street that look. Yeah, that'll be alright. Try the Olympi. Yeah that's coming off. Yeah look at that that's coming off virtually straight away. Just leave that in there a second. You can walk in the cooling tray over here. I like to rinse them off after I've uh, used the caustic soda. This helps get any of the crop rubbish off. So yeah, let's have another butchers, see what we've got. Yeah, I, always keep, I don't walk away and leave my stuff in caustic soda. It's too easy to get distracted and leave them in too long. This way you can keep an eye on them and take them out when necessary. Yeah, that's not a treat. Do my hands in the way, but yeah. There you go. That'll go in there. Yeah, that's for another project I'm doing. This is the one we're concentrating on. I might as well uh, kill two birds with one stone, so they say, John, so they say. This video might be a bit longer because I'm showing a bit more of the process. I mean, most people know it all goes, but some newcomers might not. So yeah, it's coming off. Clamp it in there. I'll tell you something, these stripping clamps aren't cheap. I was going to buy some the other day and I thought, flipping it. Even in the fishing shops or somewhere, even on eBay, they're blooming expensive. What to do with somebody, knowing somebody in the old uh, hospital business, I'm sure they must throw these away after a few times. Right. There you go, that's all done. Tuck that in there and all the way top. That just leaves here the boot. Yeah, that's not a problem. Please take notice, I'm not particularly, I'm not wearing gloves. But I've got my safety glasses on. Um, but you should really wear gloves doing this. And 
I've got the vent so there's no fumes coming up into my face. But it is nasty stuff. If you're not careful. A lot of people don't. Ah, you see, look at that. You know what we said about that glue being on there? Look at that. Yeah. See that wobbling about there? So that rivet attachment can't be very good on there. We'll have to be careful with that because I don't want to lose the position of it. Alright. Job done. There you go, got the ultrasonic clean on the go. Temperature there and the timer. Right, that's all the uh, Cossack soldering and wire brushing done. Not too bad. No pitch in it as far as I can see. It was, we had a bit of a struggle because some of these thin lines, what's supposed to be body lines, you do get here, especially, where it's a bit wavy and it, it's so thin. If you take mess about too long with it, you're going to lose it altogether. We don't want to do that. So I've done the best I can around there because it's very thin, that line. It's too thin to scrape it as well when it's all done. Um, yeah. Dug all that out. There was a casting line there. You can just see the remnants of it there. At the back there. But So it should be okay now. Uh, this thing, hinge. You can see the three pins on there. And the three holes in there. So that will go. So that's be glued back in there. I presume what probably happened was it broke off and the owner um or the father or parent or whatever did it and just put something back in there to hold it in place. So we'll super glue that in so that can go back in. So that's not a problem. I'll do that before I paint it actually. There's the boot all cleaned up. Yeah, this is uh, some very thin lines on these. Very thin lines along here. Cause there is a body line along there. There. Yeah, so that's that done. Uh, ultrasonic cleaner did a job on the on here. Clean most of it up. So I'm in the wheel. So I'm not going to take these off. I'll clean them up a bit better than this, and then I'll paint that, hand paint that, or I'll just give it a quick coat of black. At the end of the day, saves me taking mess about taking these out. I can polish these up with a cotton bud. That's it. Windscreen. Ah, uh, the ultrasonic. Yep. Yeah. We need work on the front. I haven't got to that yet, but we're definitely going to need work on the front. And these two sides bits shouldn't be too bad. That's just ingrained muck and dirt. So I would say we'll get that. We'll have a look at that on camera in a little bit. I need to get this primed now. Get this all. This get this glued on. Get the primer of paint on this. Okay, let's take a look at this window unit, shall we? What we're going to do with this? Uh, a lot of people use wet and dry um, emery paper or whatever. Uh, I got these sanding sticks. I I don't mind wet and dry. I've used it a few times, but I, it, I don't. It's messy, so I use these. Uh, now I haven't. Touch the front of the screen, as you can see. But I have done one side, if you look, that side there, because that was what it was like. Got the muck on it. And this is after it's been the ultrasonic and after I've washed it, so it's still got a marks on it. But I did this side with these sanding sticks, and it's fine. Uh, the back was okay, just needed buffing up. So now we're going to attack the front. Now, this is fairly rough. I might end up losing the window wipers. Hopefully not. I'll try and avoid them if I can. Um, but they're right at the bottom. I might be all right with it and I might not. So, this is rough. 
to about 240, something like that. This is my favourite one. This is this is uh, about 300 and going to 500, something like that. I can remember rightly. I can't remember offhand exactly. I usually get my finger on it and I can normally tell which is which. This is my buffer, but my buffer's about worn out now, as you can see. And I cut the point on the end to get into the angles. Right, so we'll start off with this rough side and see how we go with this. I just like to, you don't have to go mad with it and press really hard. This is quite rough. You can feel it under the pad. I might have to resort to a, a tougher grit. You can scrape, if you wish, with a, um, a sharp, really sharp knife or a sharp blade. But I normally tend to do that on on the flat pieces like that, not so much on the curved pieces. And you have to be careful you don't scratch it. You, you're scraping the plastic. You're not trying not to dig into it, if you know what I mean. I'm trying to avoid the wipers here at the bottom. Just keep going over it. You'll feel it under your fingers. That it's getting smoother. Just keep keep going at it. And you give it a wipe. Yeah, I go a bit more. When it's when it's like that, is it wipe it on the? I have a cloth on my knee and I wipe the wipe the crap off it. Keep going at it. I'm not going to uh, fast forward this. I'll just do a bit and see how we get on with it. Once you see it coming up clean, then I'll stop the camera and then I'll carry on off camera. All right, as you can see, it's getting a little bit better. I'll do a bit more. And then we'll switch, switch it up to another grade. It's a shame, really, because it's a good thick window unit, and it's not broken. If we can save it, we will do our best. So <laughs> you're all probably thinking I'm going to nip fastest now. Move it forward. Move it on, boys. Move it on. Right, let's swap. Right, let's flip this over and we'll try this side. Let's see what's happening. See what's happening. It's all about personal choice. If you want to use wet and dry and you're comfortable doing that, yeah, you do it. See, that's becoming clearer. Look at that. If you can see just below the window wipers there, what it was and what it is now. So I'll give it a bit longer. A bit more. I'm going to have to try and get in between the wipers in a minute. Yeah, it just takes time, patience. You'll get there. If it doesn't work, I'll just start off again with a rougher grit and get right into it. I should be able to go over the top of the wipers now because it's just smoother grip. Just give it a wipe. 
Right, you can see it's a bit clearer. Let's go with the buffer. See what we got. This is a double sided buffer. One's a real smooth side and one's got a bit of grit in it. Not a lot. Not a lot, not a lot. Don't forget we're going to dip it in the clear floor polish afterwards. Yeah, she's, well, how long have we been on it? Six minutes. It's took you six minutes to get to this stage. So it's not too bad. It's make, it just makes the video going to be that a bit longer, that's all. Yeah, look at that, that's coming up. Nice, isn't it? We'll flip it over. Let's see what we got. See what we got. Oh yeah, that's going to work. It's going to be a lot better than what it was. You can get sanding sticks anywhere, any particular brand, as long as you uh, get the buffer. You can get them from the supermarkets, off the um, the makeup section. I was going to say ladies section then, but it seems it doesn't matter these days, does it? So we'll call it the makeup section, yeah. Okay. And while you're doing this, <laughs> this is quite a thick glasses, so we're all right. But there's some glasses what are a bit thinner. And some of it a little crack in there, so you be careful where you're holding it. You don't want to be giving what I'm doing, all of a sudden it's snapping off. And then you will be pissed off. You will. Trust me. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Right, let's give it a little bit of a an all over wipe. See what we've got, shall we? Oh yeah. What a difference the day makes. Look at that. So much different, isn't it? Right, and I think I might just need a little bit more in between the wipers. But I don't know if I'm going to bother, really, to be honest with you, because I don't want to lose the wipers. So there you go. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments. That's the outside, so all I've got to do now is do this side. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, it's all done. It's all cleaned up. I've done the other side as well. All I've got to do now is uh, put it in the floor polish and put it under cover, which I've got here. I use these, I use these uh, business card holders. what I normally do and I just put it on my towel put it on my towel and put the lid over the top and let it dry overnight so there you go now I forgot to mention earlier that while you excuse me while you're sanding using sanding sticks not wet and dry but if you're using it to do what I'm doing using it dry um, this plastic will heat up whilst you're sanding it so be mindful of that and if you're doing a lot of sanding quite quickly um then what i suggest you do is let it rest a little bit let it cool down it sounds strange it ain't gonna get you think well i ain't gonna get that hot but it does get hot plastic will because you like friction it will get hot so to save yourself some aggro down the line just let it cool for uh, half a minute whatever and then carry on sanding you know otherwise it will start to get hot heat up and the surface will just begin to pick up more and more on your sander and you'll it, it will make it uh, rough all right okay all right so we'll give it a final clean and then get it in the in the polish all righty then that's the paint all done in the blue this is a uh, ford olympic blue 
I've done it in. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done is just scraped that there and that there and the same on the boot lip there because these had quite a prominent piece of trim around there. So I've just got to smooth it out a little bit because it's a bit, a bit lumpy there. Yeah, apart from that, it's come out quite nice. Now we've got some details to do. We've got the front grille, bumpers. These bumpers had overriders, black overrider rubbers on the front and on the back as well. So we can try and do that. We put in the uh, lights at the back, we can. Filler cap and the, uh, I going to say, chrome handlebars and door handles. There wasn't a body trim on here, not on this 1300 anyway. There was some chrome around the window, but the moulding's not enough there for me to do. So we're not going to do that. We'll end up mucking it up. Right. Okay, got the brush, got the paint. Anybody want to know, I use uh, metal coat, aluminium, non-metallic. Okay. Right, get comfortable. Get me other um, glasses on me. Oh, hang on a minute. Bloody hell. There you go, that's got it. My uh, what's name glasses went a bit wappy then. So, yeah, <clears throat> as always, we'll have a little chat. Oh, yeah, and the um, engine, I'll do mostly all black in there because it's a black radiator, black hoses. And I'll probably do a different colour top because I think a lot of them had um, like an aluminium top on there but there's not a great lot of detail i can do in there but we'll give it a go anyway okay oh yeah and i've done the bonnet as well that's there so i've got my brush i'm using a uh three zero brush just a bog standard off uh, i think i've got these out of the range Yeah, I go through quite a lot of brushes. I'm a bit fussy. Once they start getting a bit of funny, I'll get rid of them. They're not exactly expensive. There we go. Yeah. So we'll just get this crown on there. Then I've got to find some jewels for the headlights at the front. So it's all go. It's all going old Hacienda. Some number plates. Yeah, we'd normally have this done by now, but I've had a lot of work around the house to do, garden and such. Because it's growing season, and everything's growing. Grapevines running away with itself. Hedges, grass. You know what it's like, fellas. So there you go. And when you see this video on Wednesday, it'll be my birthday. 66. So I've made it to 66. So there you go. Old man. If I keep stopping when I'm doing this, it's because the dog keeps coming in that shed and the floor of my shed, because it's over 40 years old, my shed, and it's gradually collapsing bit by bit. It's got that many supports underneath it and everything else. It... Uh, the floor is a little bit bouncy when he comes in, or she comes in. It, the floor sort of bounces a little bit, so I have to grip my brush so it doesn't uh, make a mess. But she just likes to lay down there by my chair, looking out the door into the garden, as they do. I don't allow the dogs in the shed when I'm uh, using the wire wheel or the uh, 
when I'm painting. The close sign is up then. More so with the wire wheel. Because uh, the little bits of wire that come off gets in their paws and their pads. Yep. It's early morning at the minute. What time is it? It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. Over here in the UK, the sun has just started to come out. Well, it's out, but it's getting a bit of heat in it now. I'm usually up about 5 o'clock in the morning. The dogs get me up. I want to go out for the toilet. That's the grill. We're going to put a bit of a wash in there later. Okay. Now you see, you notice here, on this grill here, with the moulding, they've moulded it so it comes out a little bit there, but then they've moulded it better that side. The headlight is slightly different. If you look at the ring on the headlight, there's slightly different. Anyway, that's the grill. How long we got? We've done six minutes, so I do a a bit more of the bumper and then uh, we'll get on because I'm a bit late with this one I need to crack on Here we go. Yeah, quite a few of these Triumphs in this one. There's Triumph 1300s, Triumph Dolomite, Dolomite Sprites. What was the other one? Um, Triumph Toledo. Yeah, quite a few of these. You certainly don't see so many on the road now. That's for sure. Just nice and steady, take your time. Just small amounts of paint. Keep readjusting for the light so you can see where you've missed. That's always a big thing. I don't know if I'm out of shot. I ain't been looking at the camera. It's always nice to look at the Google images to see uh, what was painting and what wasn't, what was chrome, what wasn't, what trim was on you can put on just to make it look a little bit better. It's personal choice. I like doing a few extra details. Not over the top, but just enough. Just enough for the city. Okay. Right, that's enough on that's nine minutes, so we'll carry on. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, here we go then. All the details painted. Got the dual headlights in. Number plate. And I put the black wash in the grill. Wrap around indicators because these are quite big indicators wrapped around there towards the back front wheel arch. Both sides. Got some engine detail going on in there. Like I say, it went a lot to detail up really. Just give it a little bit of colour. Door handles. 
back lights. Now what I did use, I've been trying these out. I got these the other day. These Pulsar or po po Posher, Pulsar, whatever. We've got these. We've got an orange, a red and a silver. And they, they go on and they go on like a map. So that then I went over with the Tamiya clear. So it gives it uh, a bit of depth. So I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, done the bonnet. Picked out the Triumph on the front there. And put a little chrome piece on there. And I've got the boot done. Number plate. I've scraped along the back there. As you told you earlier. Along the back there. Around there. Uh, and the glass. has just come out of the thing and that how clean that's come up considering what it was so we're happy with that uh you've seen the chassis you know, tires on these original tires what were on it okay so the next step oh when i did the uh, headlights i used a crystal clear and a placing pen is a wax pen any wax pen you can use i've just got this in uh, in a set of stuff uh, it's not too bad you just got to touch it lightly rather than put too much pressure on it and it'll work out all right yeah crystal clear good stuff for canopies doing small windows you can make small windows with this um you drag it across like a stitching patch, patch and then you let it dry but it's come out quite nice on the headlights okay yeah, these are quite big headlights. These I've got to find some this size. But yeah, they come out all right. So, next stage, assembly stage. Okay then, here we go. Here we go. Right, we'll get up on the roof. Drop the glass in. Uh, hang on a minute. Yeah, scrub that a minute. I think the best bet is get this get this bonnet in first. It's gonna be a bit tricky. It's gotta make sure it goes in the right place. Yeah, at least a room to open it. Okay. All right, that'll stay in there now. Glass in. Boot in. Interior. Now this bit slides in at the back there. Like so. So we should be good to go. Yeah, boots down. Right. Super duper on the old uh, rivet. Make sure that's okay. That's turning. That's down flat. When the unit's in. Just want to make sure that's in there flat. That's it, yeah. Just checking on stuff before we continue. Excuse me a second. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Put the old super in here. Just a little dabble, do ya? Just a little dabble, do ya? Ooh, ooh. Okay, there you go. Well, 
right next time you see it it will be on the uh on the magic maybe an outside shop and we'll get it on the garage i suppose as well yeah we can do that this is what we started with dinky toys triumph 1300 yeah in the blue severely play worn and it's got a really mucky window unit so have a look see how it turned out have a look at this feast your eyes on this Here we are then, all done and dusted. Dinky Toys Triumph 1300. Yep, the boot keeps dropping down. Get up there. Yep, Triumph 1300. In the uh, Ford Olympic Blue, we've done the tail lights, we've done the bumpers, number plates on it, everything else, clean that horrible old glass up. Put some detail on the engine. Yeah, so we've done a pretty good job on that one. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So, let's have that down. Let's have that down. Got the dual headlights in the front. Blacked out the grill. Yeah. Okay. That's another one done. Onwards and upwards to the next one. And hopefully we'll see you all again next week with another restoration. So whatever you're doing, be happy. Hopefully be lucky. And we'll see you all next week. Bye for now. See you later. And...